Gourmet Guitars, the best Luthiers DVD series. From guitar enthusiasts for guitar enthusiasts. I won't say that I think it's the magic ingredient. I think that many tone woods, many species, can make fabulous guitars. Uh, if you want that pre-war Martin sound, it's easier to get it if you use Adirondack red spruce. If you have a decent piece of wood, um, it combines the best qualities of all the other spruces. So it has sort of the, the stiffness and the um, the strength of the German spruce. It has the sort of big warmth of the Angleman, and it has the tensile strength and the, uh, um, you know, the ability to hold bridges on of the Sitka. So, um, so it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's hard to beat in those respects. And uh, although there are other fine woods for tops, there's, there's German spruce and there's Engelmann spruce and there's even very nice Sitka spruce, some of which can have uh, striations in the grain that are aberrant and everyone calls them bear claw because the legend is that that's where the bear in the woods scratched his nails on the tree, which is a funny story, completely apocryphal of course. Um, but bear claw makes a great spruce top. What I look for primarily is a good tone, tap tone, and stiffness, but that does not make it a master grade top. Uh, master grade is more of a cosmetic designation because I have plenty of spruce tops that make excellent guitars that would not qualify as master grade. And master grade is more visual perfection and well there was plenty of pre-war spruce that would these days not be considered top grade spruce and if you look at the you know the vintage 30s martins a lot of them had run out in the top a lot of them had uneven grain spacing uh, the 28 models had you know reasonably close grain but it, for the most part not real close grain and until you got into the, you know, the 45 models, you really didn't see the super close grain and, and even some of those had run out in them. A master grade top in Adirondack spruce is not as stringent a specification as it would be in Sitka or even European spruce. And certainly not as much as what a cedar top would be. Uh, Engelman and cedar, you can get absolutely perfect even grain, 30 lines to the inch, absolute even color, no run out, and that would be a master grade top. And in European spruce, it's not quite, it's just not available like that. I mean, it, it would be absolutely master grade if, if it was available, uh, but the, the specifications are a little more lenient. It can be, in my opinion, and of course, each person has a slightly different opinion of what this is, is that it can be slightly wider at the edges. Uh, you would always want it to be absolutely quarter sawn, which displays the best silk figure. And almost universally, it needs to be with no run out, which is the effect of when you look at it, that one side of the top looks slightly darker than the other. And um, with Adirondack spruce, a minor amount of color would probably be acceptable. It's not, you know, not very much color uh, variation. 
and the grain widths would be slightly wider. So, uh, but with Sitka spruce, it needs to be absolutely as good as with cedar or Engelman. You know, very even grain, very quarter sun, no run out, very even color. And then that would be a master grade top. And uh, all of those woods work wonderfully on guitars, and all of them have to work in balance with the woods that are chosen for the sides and the back. I think my favorite guitar um, is a double O size, um, just all around. If I had to <clears throat> pick all around favorite guitar, and part of the reason is um, I just think it aesthetically works really well. I just love the look. Um, but tonally, I mean, I, I go back and forth. I mean, I, I like, for me, it's a toss up between the OM and the 12 fret double O. I mean, I was talking about a double O. I just said 12 fret, but I meant, I was thinking of a double O. Um, I just particularly like that guitar, <clears throat> and I like the slotted peg head, I like the way it looks. Um, but, but tonally it's a toss up for me, it could be either one, and it depends on the day and what I'm playing. They're just very different guitars. It's a little bit like comparing, you know, two of your children in the same family. I mean, you can't, you know, you take them both. This would be like a double O sized? So double O, triple O, double O. Well, triple O would be the size of yours, which is actually that's long right. scale OM. And that's this is right. smaller. And I should have called them up just to find out because I'm so bad with those O's. You know, it, it, it's good for business to advise clients to buy both. But it's true. I mean, you really need one of each. I think at present I have about 11. And Steve McCreary laughs at me because most of them in, are in the shape of an L double O. He said, how many L double O's and C10's can you have? You know, well, I think you can have quite a few. Wish I could save you from yourself. Jump inside your head, take you by the wheel. And all the conversations we've always said, there ain't no one to blame. The sustain is wonderful also. Gourmet Guitars, the best Luthiers DVD series. From guitar enthusiasts for guitar enthusiasts.